the twin paradox. We're going to destroy it, the logical structure thereof. So in 1911, the physicist Paul Langevin announced what he saw as an implication of special relativity, the twin paradox. Namely, the rocket right edge twin leaves the Earth, returns, and has aged less than his brother. Langevin was totally abysmally wrong. Yet strangely, Einstein sided with Langevin. And since then, books, journals, and YouTube channels have tried to make sense of this. Namely, how can we make logical sense of the one twin and only the one twin, the twin of the rocket, aging less than his earthbound brother? This is just a tiny fraction of the YouTubes out there. Simply, you cannot. And if you do, you destroy both the logical structure of special relativity and another key element of current physics. Let's see why. In any resolution, so-called, of the twin paradox, there's one essential constraint on thought, the Michelson-Morley experiment. In this experiment, we had an apparatus, basically an interferometer apparatus, and the Earth was considered to be like a boat going through the ether medium, like a boat pushing through it against the current. Two light waves were sent out through the apparatus and back, bounced off the mirrors and back at right angles to, to each other. And the wave going parallel to the current by a little Pythagorean mass should take longer. Hence, waves out of sync, the waves will be out of sync at the inter intersection when they come back. There should be an interference pattern. Strange result. No interference pattern. So was the Earth not moving? So this is the situation that SR was taken to address. That is why I was considered a, a resolution of the experiment's problematic results. Lorentz's proposal, Hendrik Lorentz, was that the arm parallel to the ether moving against the current is contracted contracted by a length just enough to make the arrivals of the two light wave simultaneous, in sync, no interference. In essence, both arms are now equal, same travel time. This was a very concrete, physical, ontological contraction he envisaged, and he provided electrodynamical arguments along with his equations. But, said physics, the contraction is too ad hoc, a little too mystical too fortuitous. Special relativity was taken to explain Michael Simboli by calling it all a measurement effect. What is a measurement effect? Well, I want to measure my toaster. I've got two different rulers, but both are exactly the same length. They're just marked differently. One marked six inches, one marked nine inches. The toaster contracts from nine inches to six inches, or expands from six inches to nine inches. This is obviously not a real, not an ontological contraction, not a physical contraction. It is a measurement effect, an effect of the screwy rulers. In special relativity, the rulers are light rays and clocks. Clocks synchronized or unsynchronized, depending on whether the observer is considered stationary or in motion. Observer 1 on the left says he is stationary. He holds observer 2 to be in motion. His clocks, observer ones, have been synchronized. The, the lightning strikes he considers are simultaneous. The bolts strike both mirrors and strike both clocks at 2 p.m. Simultaneous. Observer two can say the same thing, that he's stationary, the uh, observer one is in motion. Again, going back to observer one, observer one says observer two is in motion, moving away from the yellow bolt towards the blue. So the light from the yellow bolt is lagging behind as, his, as observer two moves away. So the lightning strikes cannot be in sync. They can't be a simultaneous in the system. So O2's clocks therefore cannot actually be in sync. Because he is in motion, the method by which he synchronizes clocks per Einstein is faulty. Again, either observer can claim the situation that he is at rest, the other in motion. Claim, claim that for each, the, for each other, that the lightning bolts are not simultaneous. No one can say differently. 
This is the reciprocity feature of special relativity. So for observer one, observer two's time units and distance units must be altered to account for this. Hence the Lorentz equations, t prime, the time units, and x prime, the distance units, are going to be altered as a function of observer two's velocity. Again, O2 can say the same thing about observer one, reciprocity. Note, the Lorentz equations are compensatory. Time units expand as distance units contract. This is going to be important. So the rulers, the light rays and clock rulers, never change. They are invariant, just like the blue and yellow ruler never changes, just different marks on them. So the rulers, just in this case, the light rays and clocks have just different proportions of space and time. Hence, the length change of the Michelson-Morley apparatus arm, a measurement effect, like the two rulers, blue and yellow. But the changes again, note, are compensatory, time for space. They must be of the same order, measurement effects. All effects in special relativity are measurement effects. The length change has a measurement effect. The time change, a measurement effect. So if the rocket twin is truly physically aging more slowly, gray beard, wrinkles, rheumatism for the earth twin, for the rocket twin, youthful skin, looks like Brad Pitt, etc., a real physical and ontological difference is of the toaster. You're actually physically shrinking, not just an effect of the rulers. You are describing a real and ontological effect. But SR, in its logical structure, cannot explain ontological effects, only measurement effects. Further, and this is the key, you are destroying special relativity as an explanation. It is as a measurement problem, as an explanation of Michelson Morley. This is exactly as one example of tons where this is done. The channel worked on saving as a real effect the differential aging. Struggled to do so with no clue that in doing so, physics explanation of Michelson Morley was simultaneously being destroyed. The reciprocity feature, by the way, is the wall that float head physics hit. The rocket can be taken and neutralized via its motor as the motion of the Earth. The Earth twin leaves and returns having the age less than his rocket brother. So either twin can age less than the other, part of the paradox. But reciprocity, we saw, is one of the key features of special relativity that forces it to be dealing only with measurement effects. Extremely common to show one diagram, Alice at rest, Bob in motion. This is Sean Carroll's version of this, this approach. So we throw in some arguments, solve it all on that basis of one diagram. This is um, Sabine's same picture, Alice at rest, Bob in motion. Reciprocity is thrown in the trash can. Oh, and they throw in or tend to accelerations too into the picture, but one should realize if you're using accelerations, then stunning confirmations of special relativity and not stunning confirmations of special relativity, but of something else. You need two diagrams, one for each observer. Bob at rest, Alice moving, Alice at rest, Bob moving. But then, of course, the structure of your argument dissolves. It's shown for what it is, an emperor with no clothes. A variant of the problem. This is the structure of the argument with which float head physics began. Ongoing rock, outgoing rocket A transmits its clock reading to incoming rocket B. B continues on to Earth and in a, quote, triumph, unquote, for special relativity, A's clocks are seen to have been slowed relative to the Earth's. Everything's fine as far as special relativity is concerned, except one problem. This involves an omniscient observer, which cannot exist in special relativity. There can be no omniscient observer. A does not think he's moving. He is at rest. Only the author of the argument thinks A isn't moving. He needed to ask A. A's time is unaffected. The Earth is moving back and away. And again, this is the piece of the problem that ultimately uh, warped um, fluid head physics mind. Dealing with this reciprocity feature, like I said, destroyed fluid head physics. In any case, you are trying to save a real ontological effect 
within a structure, special relativity, that is not meant or arranged to deal with real effects and simultaneously destroying special relativity's explanation of Michelson morally. This must be understood. These are very real, very ontological effects as a function of velocity. Muons with longer lifespans. The greater the velocity, the greater the lifespan. Clocks slowed on jets circling the world, the half the Keating experiment. I'm not denying the reality of these effects. If you say that I'm denying the reality of these effects, well, I'm going to sick my grandmother on you with a rolling pin. Even a slower aging twin is a possibility. But these stunning confirmations of special relativity, the muons, the jet slowed clocks, are not confirmations, in fact, of special relativity. Special relativity is being invalidly used to explain them. It can only explain measurement effects. Some other theory is needed to explain these very ontological, very velocity-related slowing or retardation of processes effects. Lorentz's contraction model was based in the ether and the apparatus arm moving against the flow of the ether current. So what a model or could be of the, of the retardation of processes. For example, the slowing of the radiation away of the structure of the muon. In any case, whatever theory, this is the physics, this is what physics should be looking for. There is another paradox. It indicates both physics awareness of and confusion on the problem. The pull barn paradox. At rest, the pull is too long to fit in the barn. Put in motion at high velocity, the pull fits in the barn. Physics uses this as a parable to show that these are not ontological effects. It unhesitatingly invokes the reciprocity feature of SR. The barn can be put in motion. Now the pole does not fit. So like the toaster, the length contraction is not an ontological, not a physically real effect. In other words, the contraction is, no other option, a measurement effect. This saves special relativity's explanation of Meccas and Morley as far as the length contraction goes. But one more time, in Einstein's system, the Lorentz transformations are compensatory. Space units contract as time units expand. They must be of the same order, that is, measurement. So it is absurd to be trying to prove that there is an actual ontological physical difference of aging in the context of special relativity, that is, that the time transformation is ontological. Again, you need some other theory to be showing why these effects happen. The entire last 100 plus years, as far as special relativity discussions go, should be seen for what it is, an embarrassment to physics. Finally, for those interested in artificial intelligence, especially artificial general intelligence and the problems of achieving it, and particularly in the context of the problem of space and time, well, I think you might be interested in this book. You might want to take a look.